Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we've made a team of 11 footballers who caused trouble, ruined their careers and in some cases even went to prison. Remember to follow us on Twitter where you can suggest players for future videos and who knows, you could be featured on our YouTube channel. On with the list. Goalkeeper, Bruce Grobelar. One of just three Zimbabweans to play in the Premier League alongside Benjani and Peter Nvulu. Bruce Grobelar spent 15 seasons with Liverpool in the 80s and 90s, winning the league six times and the European Cup. He was the first African international to lift the trophy. But by 1994, Grobelar was becoming more erratic. His place was under threat from a youngster called David James, and he frequently found fault with his teammates, once grabbing Steve McManaman by the throat when the winger made an error, gifting Everton a goal in the derby. That same year, the Sun accused the keeper of match-fixing, along with Villa's John Fashionu releasing a video in which Grobelar discussed throwing games for a betting syndicate. Grobelar unconvincingly claimed that he had been gathering evidence to take to the police, somehow managing to avoid prison time, and sued the Sun for libel. He was awarded just £1 in damages and was ordered to cover the Sun's legal costs of £500,000. He couldn't afford it, went bankrupt, and ended up playing in the second division to pay the bills. Right back, Glenn Johnson. You'd be forgiven for not knowing that Glenn Johnson is still playing in the Premier League. But the Stoke defender, who won the title with Chelsea in 2005, is only 33. And whilst it's a crime that the fullback has 54 England caps, more than Jamie Carragher and Robbie Fowler, that's not the reason he makes our list. In 2007, Johnson was on loan at Harry Redknapp's Portsmouth when he was caught trying to shoplift in homeware store B&Q. According to onlookers, Johnson put a toilet seat in a different box with a lower price and also tried to hide a set of taps under a sink at the checkout in the hope they wouldn't be scanned. At the time, Johnson was earning £30,000 a week. That's over £1.5 million a year. Then 22, Johnson was rumbled by a 74-year-old security guard and he and his accomplice were fined £80 by the police. Centre-back Fabio Cannavaro The Berlin Wall almost found himself behind bars in 2015, despite a glittering career which brought the Italian two titles with Real Madrid and of course the 2006 World Cup, where Cannavaro captained his country to victory, making the team of the tournament and winning the Ballon d'Or. However, the centre-back has courted controversy throughout his career. Whilst at Juventus in 1999, Cannavaro was filmed injecting phosphocretine, a muscle-building compound, and 10 years later, now back at the old lady, he failed a drugs test, this time claiming that the result was a false positive caused by medicine for a wasp sting. Both times he got off without a charge, but his luck was to run out. In 2015, Cannavaro, his brother Paolo, who played for Napoli, and Cannavaro's wife Daniela were all handed suspended prison sentences after they broke into Fabio's former residence. The property had been seized by the Italian police as they investigated charges of tax evasion and fraud against the footballer. Oh Fabio, with a face like that, you really don't want to end up in prison. Centre-back, Kevin Muscat. So dirty that even in Australia he's considered a maniac, Kevin Muscat played for Crystal Palace and Rangers in the UK, where he won a Scottish treble in 2003. He then moved back to Oz, helping Melbourne victory to their first title in 2007, and picking up a second two years later. But it's not his CV which has brought Muscat fame. The defender is known for his aggressive play, picking up a staggering 123 yellow cards and 12 reds in his 19-year career. Manchester United winger Ashley Young claims that on his debut against Millwall, Muscat told him, if you go past me, I'll break your legs. In the end, Muscat was already sent off before Young came on as a sub. But against all the odds, Muscat has become a great example. After taking his coaching badges, the hatchet man was given the chance to manage Melbourne victory, and he led the club to a double in his first full season in the dugout. He's now been in charge for four years, but we imagine he's still a menace in training matches. Left back, Nelson Vivas. One time Arsenal fullback Nelson Vivas was not the world's most talented defender. But that didn't stop the Argentinian playing for Boca Juniors, Arsenal and Inter Milan, as well as picking up 39 caps for his nation. Vivas has just a community shield to show for his 15 years in the game, but when he retired in 2005, he decided to add to his trophy cabinet as a coach. He became an assistant to his former international teammate, Diego Simeone, working under Cholo Estudiantes and River Plate, and then took the top job at his chartered club, Quilmes. Four months in, Quilmes was 16th out of 20, having taken just 14 points from 12 games, but things were about to get worse. Angered by abuse from a fan, Vivas ran into the stands during a game and punched the man three times. He subsequently had to resign and Quilmes finished third from bottom. Nelson Vivas bad at both football management and anger management. Midfield, Vinnie Jones. Anyone constantly trying to prove they're a hard man is more likely to be a total dickhead, and Vinnie Jones was no exception, a thug on and off the pitch who simply wasn't great at football. A member of Wimbledon's crazy gang, Jones won the FA Cup in 1988, 
the sole trophy of a 13-year career as a pro. Despite being born in Watford, Jones won nine caps for Wales, the last coming in 1997, perhaps unsurprisingly given what happened the following year. Incensed by neighbour Timothy Gear removing part of his fence, Jones forced his way into Gear's caravan, beating the man and getting convicted of assault. He was given 100 hours of community service. Like most footballers, Jones was incapable of using his brain, and five years later he was back in court. During a flight to Tokyo, the player, then retired, got drunk, started a fight with another passenger and told the cabin crew he could get all of them murdered for £3,000. He was given another 80 hours community service and has since gone on to a career in films. Midfield, Christian Tunga. Fabregas, Bellerin, Fran Marida, Arsenal's academy has turned out some gems over the years. Christian Tunga was not one of them. The Londoner joined the Gunners at the age of eight, coming through the academy with Alex Awobi, but he failed to make the grade at the Emirates or Southampton instead turning pro at Wimbledon. Tunga had made just four appearances for the Dons when his house was raided by police in 2016. The teenager was found with £700, three bags of cocaine and 29 wraps of heroin, along with burner phones which confirmed his long-standing involvement in a drugs ring. Tunga admitted intent to supply Class A narcotics, though he claimed that he had been coerced by gang members, saying they'd broken his leg after he'd spoken to the police. He was handed a two and a half year prison sentence in 2017, and looks unlikely ever to play again. Midfield, Peter Storey. English midfielder Peter Storey played over 400 times for Arsenal in the 1970s, winning a league and cup double in 1971. He earned 19 caps for the three Lions and became known for his uncompromising style, with Chelsea legend Chopper Harris labelling him the bastard's bastard. After retirement, Storey turned to another kind of villainy, financing a scheme to produce counterfeit money with London gangsters. When that ended in arrest, he got out on bail and started running a brothel hoping to earn enough to leave the country. This foolproof plan didn't work either, and Story served three years in prison. Story gradually turned into the Mr. Bean of crime, bumbling from one arrest or one boneheaded idea to the next. His finest hour came in 1990, when once again he was picked up by the police, this time for trying to smuggle 20 porn films into the country, hidden inside a spare tire in his car. Perhaps he could have used a motorboat. Forward, George Best. Maradona good, Pele better, George best, the saying goes among Man United fans. It's a far-fetched idea, but goes to show how highly rated the Northern Irishman was, and a few seconds of footage will show you why. Best was a lightning-quick dribbler who helped United win the European Cup for the first time in 1968. The same year he scored 28 league goals from the wing. Best had talent, looks and wealth, but no self-control. He was an alcoholic, a serial womanizer and a thief, getting arrested in 1974 when he stole a fur coat cash and a passport. His deteriorating form that year saw Man United relegated from the English top flight, and Best went on to play for such footballing giants as Stockport County, Los Angeles Aztecs, and the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. He squandered all of his earnings and would steal from women's handbags to fund his drinking sessions, but he would end up paying a bill of sorts. In 2000, it was found that Best's liver was functioning at 20% capacity, and by 2005, he was dead at just 59 years old. Forward, Karim Benzema. Despite his Muslim faith, Karim Benzema has developed a reputation for some pretty ungodly behaviour off the pitch. The three-time Champions League winner was arrested in 2015 for his part in an alleged blackmail plot, reportedly having conspired with friends to swindle fellow French international Matthew Valbuena out of cash using a sex tape. Benzema's defence has been the undercover police pushed him into the affair, and it's not the first time the Frenchman has tried to get off on a technicality. In 2010, Benzema, Sidney Guvu, Hatem Ben Arfa and Frank Ribéry were investigated on suspicion of involvement in an underage prostitution ring. Benzema and Ribéry were indicted when it was found that they had both had sex with Zahir Dehar, who was 16 at the time. Unbelievably, the charges were dropped because the prosecution couldn't prove that the footballers had known Dehar's age at the time, and the men claimed they had only given her money for food and travel, not for sex. So that's all fine then. Forward, Nar Ranger. Chances are you wouldn't even know Nar Ranger's name if it weren't for his misdemeanours. A striker, Ranger was trained at Southampton, but left the club after he was sent to a young offenders institute following his role in an armed robbery when he was 16 years old. He then moved to Newcastle, where he made more than 50 appearances, helping the Magpies win promotion back to the Premier League in 2010. Unfortunately, Ranger didn't take his career seriously at all, regularly skipping training and Newcastle eventually released him, but not before he had faced assault and drunken disorderly charges and been fined by the FA for homophobic language. He also got his own surname tattooed on his forehead. Spells with Swindon and Blackpool ended badly after Ranger disappeared from training, and in 2017 he was sentenced to eight months in prison after pleading guilty to fraud and money laundering charges. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the video. Your award, the face of the poshest man in football daily. 
For more great content, why don't you click in this box here? And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.